Oh my god, I'm actually playing a game I don't have major problems with. Hallelujah. Today, I'm getting every single achievement in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. As always, I'll be using the Retro Achievements website, which gives me a total of 53 different achievements to obtain. Yeah, that's a lot, so you'd think I'd be pretty concerned about this. But honestly, most of these achievements don't look like they're gonna be that bad to obtain. Yeah, there are still a couple of achievements that practically ask you to reprogram your entire brain just to do something moderately cool. But other than that, this looks pretty tame. I'm definitely a fan of the lack of a deathless achievement similar to Sonic 1. Or at least it would have been similar if they didn't update Sonic 1's achievements to now include one. God damn it. Anyway, while this is going to take me some time, I don't think this is going to be anywhere near as traumatizing as Sonic 2. But will this hypothesis be correct? Let's start from the top, shall we? So, uh, I may have forgotten to press record for the first 40 minutes of playing the game on day one. Good thing I was streaming. So if some of the footage from the start up until the middle of the second zone looks a little pixelated, that's why. Sorry about that. Unlike Sonic 1 or 2, the first achievement I'm going to get is actually pretty unique. By going to Angel Island Zone, hopping onto this vine, and pressing left, 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 right, 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 up, 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 you'll unlock level select and get the pulling a fast one achievement. However, this also completely disables every other achievement in the game from being obtained, apparently. So I immediately have to <clears throat> unplug my Sega Genesis and plug it back in to start getting achievements again. It's not that big a deal considering this game has actual save files, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't feel a little strange to have to do that in order to get any achievements whatsoever. After that, the rest of day one is spent beating the game with Sonic and Tails, with a few different achievements gotten along the way. This means I have to contend with the special stages, which surely means you're in for another five minute rant about how much they suck suck, right? Nope. I'm happy to say that these are some of the best special stages in the entire franchise. Instead of having to carefully bring 50 rings to the end of the stage and then vomit at the constant spinning and lack of control in Sonic 1's special stages, or having to painfully bring 50 rings to a checkpoint and then piss around with the bullshit stage design in Sonic 2's special stages, all you have to do in Sonic 3 is find one of the several giant rings throughout the levels and jump into it. That's it. No ring requirements, no risk of losing any chances at the special stages, just a test of how well you know the level design followed by one of the best feeling, best controlling, most skill based and fairly designed special stages ever made. Holy shit, am I actually having fun getting the Chaos Emeralds? Something's not right, I'm contacting my doctor. Upon entering the first special stage, I get the Emerald Cost achievement for getting the perfect bonus by collecting every ring. Then after beating the special stage, I get, ooh, shiny, for getting the first Chaos Emerald. Soon after, I get the second Chaos Emerald before quickly making my way to the end of the stage. After beating the boss, I'm able to obtain the Not So Slow Burn achievement for beating Angel Island Act 1 in under two minutes. In Act 2, up this water, Waterfall is a secret area that I had no idea even existed containing this extra life and also netting me the get a life achievement. Okay, damn, maybe I will. Nah, I'm too lazy. Not too much happens in Hydrocity Zone, yes, that's how I pronounce it, other than me getting more Chaos Emeralds, then obtaining the Rings of Plenty achievement for getting 100 rings, followed soon after by me getting the Dashing Decathlon achievement for having 10 lives. After finishing Hydrocity Zone for the Speed Wash achievement, I blast through Marble Garden Zone for the Garden Variety achievement, then after one more special stage in Carnival Night, I get the last Chaos Emerald I need for the Bring Forth Chaos achievement. It feels good to have access to Super Sonic without the prerequisite of needing to suffer for two hours beforehand. Time to rapid fire some more achievements. Carnival. Night Zone is the next stage to beat in order to get the all fun and games achievement. Then in Act 2 of Ice Cap, there's a hidden area near the end of the stage that has some rings and gets me the Frozen Assets achievement. One curb stomp later, I get the Snowy Surfing achievement and enter Launch Base Zone. Once there, if you spin dash on this alarm in a certain way, enemies will infinitely spawn 
fly right into you, letting you rack up a shit ton of points. You can do this as long as you like for infinite lives, but I just do it long enough to get the live and learn achievement for having 20 lives. Then I beat the two main bosses of the zone in order to obtain the Mobius We Have a Problem achievement. Next up is Mushroom Hill Zone, where a bit of a curveball is thrown at me. Upon entering this sort of rainbow looking ring, happy pride month by the way, all of my chaos emeralds get taken away, which leaves me unable to turn supersonic. But in exchange, seven new super emeralds show up and give me seven more special stages to tackle in order to obtain them. I'm able to get these before even finishing the next zone, because frankly, I find most of these to be way easier than the chaos emerald special stages. They do have a really nice flow to them that isn't really present in the other ones though, so I enjoyed them a lot. It's really astonishing just how much better these special stages are than in the other two classic Sonic games. But anyway, after some time, I get Fungi Fields for finishing Mushroom Hill Zone. Then once I find the last of the special stage rings I need, I get <laughs> the Hyper Fixation Achievement for getting all the Super Emeralds. That's a great name for that achievement, holy shit. And so the hardest achievement for the day was collected, and I just beat the rest of the game like normal with two key exceptions. In Sandopolis Zone, I get the Ring Ruler Achievement for getting 200 rings, and then all the way in Doomsday Zone, I get the Golden Flight Achievement for having 100 rings in said zone. Other than those two, I get the rest of the achievements obtained by beating every stage, including Electric Dreadnought for flying Battery, Pyramid Problems for Sandopolis, Magma Massacre for Lava Reef, Angel Island Prophecy for Hidden Palace, Mechanized Memories for Sky Sanctuary, Another Scrambled Egg for Death Egg, and then after beating the game, I get the Blue Blur for beating the game as Sonic, and Sonic's Flying Colors for doing so with all 14 Emeralds. Overall, this is shaping up to be a really fun set of achievements, especially considering that Sonic 3 is easily my favorite of the classic trilogy. I planned on finishing up the Tales playthrough the next day I streamed, as well as maybe starting on some of the other zone-centric achievements. Let's see how hard the next section was for me. I'm losing ranks! <laughs> I'm losing ranks! <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? The count set that's so funny, it's still, still, still counting! <laughs> it's actually subtracting your rank count! I'm lumping day two and three together for this section. Why? I marked down exactly one timestamp for day two, and it was reaching the top of this bonus stage to get the I'm Outta Here achievement. Other than that, all I did was play as Tails up to Mushroom Hill before having to stop early. So, day three. For the first hour and a half, I simply beat the game and got all 14 emeralds for the Twin Tailed Tyke and Tails Flying Colors achievements. With both Sonic and Tails having a completed save file, I can now get started with some of the other level select achievements, so I decided to start off with a couple easy ones. In Hydrocity Zone Act 1, by flying up at this specific part of the level, I can find this group of rings and get the Lone Shark achievement. Then, by going back to Angel Island Act 1, I can wait at the boss by ducking in the middle of the stage. Then, if I got there at the right time, I can jump into it when the timer says 9.59 to beat the stage, and get the In the Sonic of Time achievement. Okay, you might have tried a little too hard for that pun, but I can respect it. Up next is the Gambling is a Skill achievement, requiring you to get a jackpot in the slot machine bonus stage. You may recall that doing this was so effortless in Sonic 2 that I didn't even bother going into detail on it. And this time doesn't seem to be any different at a glance. You simply have to enter a bonus stage and then gamble as long as you need, right? Well, the first step is to keep an eye on how many rings you have before hitting a checkpoint, as the amount of rings determines which bonus stage you'll get. This is pretty simple as long as you stay in Angel Island Zone and grab this checkpoint up at the top. The problem is that when you enter the bonus stage, oh no, it's back. The mutilated corpse of the Sonic 1 special stage is back and ready to make me up chuck my lunch. And oh my god, they somehow made it feel even worse. In Sonic 1, at the very least, you were able to stick to walls and aim your jump somewhat consistently as long as you had a grasp of how the physics work. But here, Sega said fuck it, make the whole stage a bouncy castle of regret. It doesn't matter how you jump, what direction you hold, the angle of the stage, none of that. Every single surface feels like a bumper, and that's just really great when my objective is to aim myself into a small hole which is already surrounded by actual bumpers. I get it's supposed to be luck-based, and that randomness to your movements should be a given, but it's infuriating when they take something that, albeit with a lot of its own problems, had some degree of control to its movement, and completely gut any small amount of fun left from it. I should clarify, since I feel like the 
this point didn't really come across in my last video. None of this is a knock against the achievements themselves, far from it. I can appreciate them exploring every aspect of these three Sonic games and making me play parts I would otherwise ignore. That's why I love retro achievements. My ire is purely at design decisions that I find to be questionable. If I see something I don't like, I'm going to say something about it. That's just how I am. And this wasn't fun, purely because of the programmers making this play worse than what we had before, not because of the achievements. It took a while, mainly because the actual luck part of this wasn't cooperating with me either, but I eventually got the achievement. Thankfully, none of the other achievements were as inconsistent as this one, so I can breathe easy with that knowledge. I was fully expecting this achievement, the element of choice, to be just as painful. Changing shields five times in an environment that makes it really hard to stay in this bonus stage for a long time makes for a disastrous recipe that I thought was really gonna stink up the kitchen. But two things worked out in my favor here. One, I didn't have a debilitating skill issue. And two, the achievement only required me to switch shields four times rather than five. I don't know if there's something under the hood that messed up or if the achievement's description just isn't accurate, but hey, less pain for me. Maybe just change the description and not the logic though. Please, I'm allergic to challenge. Only two achievements left for today, but these two were easily the hardest for me to get. Keeping your marbles asks you to beat Marble Garden Act 1 without taking damage or turning super or hyper. Oh goody, they're asking for perfection again. But that's surprisingly not the most annoying part of this achievement. This is. You have no idea just how limiting not being able to turn super is until you actually play this game and have to avoid doing it. Each of the three characters have a different ability they can use when they press jump twice. Sonic has this useful insta shield that can extend his jump hitbox and also protect him from danger for half a second. Tails can fly and Knuckles can glide. However, once you get 50 rings, the moment you double jump, you're forced to turn super, essentially locking these abilities behind turning super and failing the achievement. And if that wasn't bad enough, Tails gets extra fucked over by this. When Sonic has one of the elemental shields, his insta shield is replaced with the shield's ability, like a double jump, a dash forward, and a bounce downward. This also overrides transforming, meaning that as long as you have a shield, you're saved from going super. Not so with Tails, which I assume is because he can't actually use the shield's abilities, thus he doesn't have any way to negate going super if he has over 50 rings. Combine that with not being able to take damage at all, and wow, I suddenly have murderous tendencies. The best play for this achievement is using Sonic and grabbing the electric shield right at the start. But unfortunately, the group of people I was talking to during stream were major Tails fans and might have cried if I switched from him. So we're stuck with him. I'd love to give you another step step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to do this level, but in truth it really doesn't matter which path you take as each one seems to be equally as dangerous. I did look up this glitch that lets me confuse the camera by doing this, followed by charging up a spin dash to go through a wall off screen and put me a bit further in the level, but I'm not 100% sure how much this actually skips, so I say only use it if you really want to. But other than that, the only real advice I have for you is to practice that tiptoeing technique, be aware of where every enemy is placed, and for the love of God, don't jump into the middle of these giant shafts. Never mind, that wasn't the right answer. <laughs> this video game is definitely designed well when you jump down and want to not get hit. Ideally, you won't have 50 rings when it comes time for the boss, but that's really, really hard to pull off. If you do have 50 rings, then don't take any risks unless you're Sonic with a shield. Either hit it only one time when it comes down and take it slow, or harness all of your gaming energy into this one badass moment. Whew. Oh, oh my god! Holy fuck my heart! Give me it! Woo! And now for the last achievement, and I'm going to read it verbatim because I read it wrong when I was doing it initially. Complete an act with at least 400 rings. It's really sad that I missed the first three words in their entirety, then got 400 rings as supersonic before quickly losing them and then thinking the achievement was broken. No, I was just being an idiot. Once again, I'm in Marble Garden Act 1 due to the amount of giant rings around the area and the fact that there's an electric shield right at the start of the level. As long as you bring out a map and pay attention to where the giant rings are, you should eventually get this given you're careful and don't get hit more than once. Oh, and as long as you don't jump into the middle of this shaft again like I did. No. 
I don't think I will. No. What? And also don't get fucked over by Jank, obviously. It's an achievement enough to get 400 rings. Look at how much work I have to put in for. What do you mean? What was that? I'm dead. Anyway, I ended up not even getting hit at all during this attempt and banked the achievement no problem. This day definitely had the highest amount of annoying or tedious achievements to get, so I'm glad that I was able to eventually get all of them out of the way. We've still got what was arguably the hardest achievement out of them all left to get, and that will be obtained on the next day of streaming. But first, we've got a multiplayer mode to tackle. I started off day four with getting all of the competition mode achievements. Competition mode has five stages, each having five laps, and each with their own achievement that tasks you with beating it under a certain time. There's also the speedy spelling bee achievement, which has you beating all of the stages in Grand Prix mode in under four minutes. A lot of the process for getting these is just trial and error while you learn each of the stages in order to do them fast enough. And trust me, you'll learn most of them fairly quickly. These achievements are thankfully not very difficult due in part to these stages being pretty small and the time limits for them being very lenient. Let's go stage by stage. For Azure Lake Zone, the optimal path for me consisted of a whopping one jump per lap at the base of this slope, then just holding right for the rest of it. There's a modern Sonic joke in there somewhere, but I'll leave that to the comedians in the comments section. Balloon Park Zone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's your happen. This one has a bit more going on, but not much. Run forward at the start, but slow down after the loop and fall down the hole. Hold right off this ramp and aim for the top of both balloons up here. It's relatively simple. Keep that up and you'll get the achievement with heaps of time to spare. Chrome Gadget Zone! Fuck! This game has really great crushing mechanics. Once again, this is a small step up from the previous zone and has a tiny bit more going on in it. Get onto the platform here and do a very small spin dash to the left. Fall down the pit and aim for the bottom spring so you don't hit the wall, then hold right to land on the platform. Quickly jump over the spring, then do a big jump up. Do another small spin dash to thread the needle into the opening, and then just hold right. A bit more elaborate, and it may take some practice, but it's more than doable. Desert Palace Zone! Eight seconds. Wow! 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 <laughs> that little bit of jank is pretty funny, right? You know what's not funny? This jank is consistent. If you don't do anything and just go through the loop normally, this will almost always happen to you and ruin your run. How the fuck did this get past QA? Combine that with this level being a little more involved than the others and you'll have this happening a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> get the hell. <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion that the time attack being this tight is because of the jank from earlier and needing to work around it. Because you have to be really precise with a certain jump to gain enough speed to win. Jump immediately at the start of the race to dodge this ramp, then hold right onto the loop. To avoid the jank and still have enough speed to win, wait until until Tails is just about flush with the left side of the loop, then jump. You should get a significant speed boost when you land at the bottom. Let yourself fall into the quicksand for a very tiny bit before doing a big jump out so you can both make it to the other side while keeping your speed up this slope. From there, hold right and jump up this ramp and you'll be good to continue. You should only have to do that precise loop jump once or twice to have enough time for the achievement. So if you want to play it safer afterwards, jump from the top of this loop instead to avoid the jank while slowing down just enough to be able to make the upcoming jumps easier. You can also just hold right up the slope here, which will slow you down, but also doesn't risk losing your speed completely if you jump onto it wrong. With enough patience, you'll eventually beat Desert Palace in under 40 seconds to get the achievement. Endless Mine! I'm kidding, no jank happened whatsoever. In fact, I beat this level on my first try because the time limit is so lenient that even with several major mistakes, I beat it with five seconds to spare. So long as you hold right for most of the level, you'll be good to go, trust me. That just leaves the Grand Prix achievement, which I don't really have much to say about, honestly. If you follow every single strategy I talked about earlier, you're practically guaranteed to get this achievement. Hell, you don't even need to use the risky strats for Desert Palace. You have so 
much time that going for the safe strats is objectively a better idea. Once I finished Endless Mine, I got the achievement with a solid 35 seconds to spare, so there's a lot of room for error. I was fully expecting this part of the challenge to take a whole stream considering I suck at speedrunning, but this only took me 45 minutes. I was very grateful. This left me with enough time to go for some more normal achievements today. These next achievements have a bit of a theme going on with them in that you need to not suck. And unfortunately, sometimes I'm just not up to the task. Aeronautics funding requires you to beat Launch Base Zone Act 2 with at least 100 rings. This is pretty annoying, but not for the reason you'd think. Since this achievement set bans level select from being used, and since the level select on a completed file only takes you to Act 1 of each zone, you can't freely access Act 2 of Launch Base. That means that each attempt, you need to beat Launch Base Act 1 before you can even try to get the achievement, and that was a tiny bit stressful. Because of this, I may have over-prepared a little. My plan was to get enough rings to be able to go hyper while still ending the level with enough rings for the achievement. And frankly, I really overdid it. But to be fair, one of my biggest gaming pet peeves is having to redo large stretches of content I've already done. So any advantage I could give myself to not have to do it again was an advantage I was going to take. With more than enough rings to maintain hypersonic, I blasted through the rest of the stage and got the achievement with little trouble. Soap Shoes requires you to beat Mushroom Hill Act 1 in under 3 minutes with the Bubble Shield. God, both a speedrun achievement and a don't take damage achievement. I didn't know you could combine an aneurysm and a stroke. From after the cutscene, mainly follow the bottom path until after this loop. You may want to play as Tails so you can just fly up here, but since I was Sonic, I used my second controller to fly up there instead and grab the shield. From here, focus on being careful rather than fast. You have plenty of time as long as you don't slow down too much and mainly stick to the straightforward path. Path. The boss is a little bit annoying though, as not getting hit requires a bit of patience. Once he starts chopping, hit him a couple times as he comes back, but don't get greedy. Wait for him to come down low enough, then jump above him and try to get the last hits in before he goes in for another attack. If done correctly, you should be completely safe as you finish the level and get the achievement. These next two achievements are very similar to each other, so let's talk about them together. Hot Tempered Temple asks you to beat Sandopolis Act 2 with a fire shield, while Tectonic Thunder asks you to beat Lava Reef Act 2 with an electric shield. For the former, there are three main fire shields you can grab. Two of them are in Act 1, one of them being in plain sight here, and the other being under this part of the ground if you bounce the end of level sign over it. There's also one in Act 2 if you're bad at video games like me and get hit at some point. So this achievement is a little more lenient than the other don't get hit types of achievements. And there's only so many times I can say just be careful and dodge everything before I start sounding like a broken record, so yeah. Yeah. There you go. As for the other achievement, as much as I'd love to give a detailed, nuanced guide on the electric shields and their many locations, one of them is literally five seconds before the boss fight. So as long as you have enough rings to stay hyper for most of the fight, just grab it, wait through the minute-long cutscene, and then hit the capsule to get the achievement. It's anticlimactic, sure, but I'm also relieved since these could have definitely been way more frustrating. Hey, guess what? It's time to not die again. The Deathless Egg achievement requires that you go through all of Death Egg Zone up until the giant robot boss without dying or transforming. Basically, take all of my complaints about beating Marble Garden without taking damage and combine it with this stage's fun gimmicks. Like this enemy that jump scares you by smoothly sliding into your DMs and this horrible fucking boss that I swear is near impossible to dodge during its second phase. And congratulations, you've created a monster. Monster. Granted, it's not that bad since you have plenty of room to take a hit provided you have rings, but the sheer anxiety I felt after making it to Act 2 where death meant I would have to beat that stupid Act 1 boss again was its own kind of misery that I wouldn't wish on anybody. It took close to a half hour before I finally made it to the end and got the achievement. Just follow the same strategy that I've been discussing for all these achievements and you'll eventually get it. We're at the last achievement I got for today, and this one is probably the most creative and 
fun achievement I've gotten on the show so far. Michael Jackson style wants you to beat special stage one with a perfect while only moving backwards through it and without pausing. While not being able to pause kind of sucks, the fact that this is even possible and is relatively feasible is what makes this such a fun achievement. Special stage one isn't really that taxing. It doesn't have any ridiculous obstacles that are a nightmare when going backwards. Any obstacles that are there give you plenty of room to turn around and look at what's coming up before committing. And the perfect bonus is really simple to obtain given you don't skip anything. To start going backwards as soon as possible, bounce off of this bumper here and then don't turn just yet. Count four blue spears before turning right, count another three before turning right again, then do that two more times to make the spears turn into rings for you to collect. After you get those rings, collect the four blue spheres in a square nearby, then it's time to go through the first bumper corridor over here. Turn around as many times as you need to line yourself up with it, then make sure your counting is on point. Count two and then turn left, count one and then turn right, count two and then turn right, count one and then turn left count two and then turn left, and count one and then turn right. Once you're out of the corridor, step one step over to the right to line yourself up with the next big square of spheres. Then do the same counting from the first big square earlier. Four before turning and then three before turning and so on. Nab the next four blue spheres in a small square nearby, then continue on in that direction. Aligning yourself to the left hole in the set of bumpers. Through there is another small set of blue spheres to collect, after which is another big square, which you should count the exact same way as the other ones. Next is the hardest part, as there's another corridor that's a tiny bit more involved while you're also going way faster. Again, trust in your counting as you line yourself up with it. Count three and then turn right, count one and then turn left, count two and then turn left, count one and then turn right, count two and then turn right, and count one and then turn left. I did this next part kinda wrong cause I was nervous, but once you're out of the corridor, step over to the right two tiles and then continue backwards to grab another big square of spears. Once you collect these rings, you should have the perfect bonus, after which all you need to do is grab the four blue spears nearby to finish the level and get the achievement. This was really, really fun. The most fun I think I'll ever have memorizing something in one of these achievements for a good while. I then started the Knuckles playthrough, but didn't end up getting very far in it before having to stop. Overall, while today had some really tough achievements, it ended on a high note. The next day was the last day of the challenge, so let's see how it went. Oh, good, oh, Knuckles! Oh, oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. Yes, somebody clip that. At this point, I only had four achievements left, two of which I would get by beating the game as Knuckles with all 14 emeralds, so that was my first priority. Everything in this playthrough went pretty smoothly, aside from this little oopsie in Carnival Night Act 2, where I somehow made it onto Sonic's path by complete accident, which broke the level entirely. Knuckles isn't supposed to have a boss at the end of his version of the level. Instead, a capsule is just sitting there for him to break. But I think because I came to this part from Sonic's path, the trigger for the capsule being there didn't activate, which meant there was nothing there. So I basically had to awkwardly maneuver onto the wall of this shaft, climb up its long, long length, and then fight this boss, which, wow, who would have thought that fighting a boss that wasn't designed with Knuckles in mind would make that boss way harder when playing as Knuckles? Man, if this wasn't a great game that was really well designed and better than its prequels in every way possible, this might have been enough to really upset me. But alas, once I reached Mushroom Hill Zone, I made a short detour in Act 2 to get the High on Shrooms achievement. By hitting this spring to launch myself up to this part of the top of the level, I can swing on this vine up and to the left in order to get up to to the top of the screen. Then I can simply jump up in order to get the achievement. I'm fairly certain that they intended you to jump up over the wall for this to count, but you know me, I love simplifying things so much that they become boring. Aren't I a great YouTuber? The rest of the playthrough didn't take very long, as Knuckles' playthrough is a lot shorter than Sonic's due to missing a few bosses and not even playing Death Egg Zone. This gets me the Red Rumbler and Knuckles' flying colors for both beating the game as Knuckles and doing it with all 14 emeralds. Believe it or not, that leaves me with only one achievement.
achievement left to get. I kind of wanted the Knuckles playthrough to be the last achievement I get and have another cool montage for you to watch, but unfortunately I need to use Knuckles for this next achievement, so... Oh well. This means that, anticlimactically, the last achievement is Left to Launch, where I have to beat Launch Base Act 1 or 2 without pressing left. Obviously, I decide on Act 1 since the boss would be way easier and I can restart it right away if I mess up. My main obstacle here is the constant battle against my muscle memory to not press left when I would do so without even thinking. But this usually led to me overcorrecting and not pressing either direction, instead relying on my spin dash and my glide to get around, which wasn't ideal. It's not every day that a seemingly simple achievement like this gives me a severe case of monkey brain, but here we are. You know exactly what advice I'm going to give you for if you decide to do this. So instead, I'm going to recommend you go into your <clears throat> real Sega Genesis settings and disable D-pad left. I didn't do this for a while and ended up being really sad at how I lost some of my attempts. So please do it. Please. After that, and after spending some time grinding up this many lives, yes, I had that little confidence in myself, I learned how the level worked and how to navigate it before finally making it to the boss. And hoo boy, if I hadn't already felt crippled by this challenge already, this made me feel like I was being curb stomped. Since you're practically forced to play as Knuckles for this if you aren't a living god at video games, and since the developers apparently have some kind of echidna vendetta, there are two of these fuckers you have to contend with. Therefore, trying to dodge these spike balls consistently without your full range of movement is like trying to dodge your taxes. You'll die trying. I guess this isn't as much of an anti-climax for me after all, since this really did feel like the final boss of the classic Sonic trilogy, testing just how far I was willing to go for this shit. Unfortunately for my sanity, I could go pretty damn far. Immediately at the start of the fight, I climb up here and land a cheeky first hit before I start my main strategy. I'm trying to get the one that's closest to the wall I'm moving towards at the lowest point it can be. Then, I quickly do a full jump, latch onto the wall, then do a fast glide off of it to hit them while keeping Knuckles safe. This is pretty consistent if you time your glide right, but if you don't, then don't risk hitting it. Just dodge their attack as best as you can and glide to the other side. Also, please press right. I kept forgetting I could since I felt like I was playing with a missing arm with how handicapped I felt. Be patient, stay safe as much as you can, and eventually, like me, you'll master Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Dude, press right. Right. Press right. Press right. Press the Press right the button, John. Yeah! yeah! There it is! Yeah! 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 All right, Finally, Jesus it. fucking Christ. Yeah! Oh, Yay! And... Time! I'll drink to that. This was my favorite game in the classic trilogy to get every achievement in. It wasn't too easy like Sonic 1's achievements were, before they ruined my life by adding more, and they didn't make me consider an alternative hobby like Sonic 2's achievements did. These were a good mix of fun challenges and showcases of flat out cool things I didn't know about this game. I had no idea the bonus stages were actually tied to your ring count upon activating the checkpoint until doing this playthrough. That's what I love about a good achievement set. They teach you things you never knew about the games you love. And that's awesome. As for what the next Sonic game will be, as much as I'd love to tackle some of the 8-bit games sometime, I think I want to go a little bigger next time. So, unless plans change, it's probably going to be the Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure. But I'm taking a break from Sonic for now. There's only so much you can see this blue rodent before you start to agree with Eggman's ideas and beliefs. That's why there's a different rodent I have my eye on first. I'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.